we're going to take a look at some artwork in Lisbon, Portugal today. Lisbon is an interesting city because the city itself is like a work of art. Now, to be fair, there are a lot of tourists here, but this museum that we visited today, it was on the side of town where not many tourists were. It was more like in the business district. This is called the Kalust Gulbenkian Museum. This entire museum is based on the collections of Kalust Gulbenkian. He was Armenian and he was born under the Ottoman Empire in 1869 in what is now Istanbul. In 1896, he decided to leave Turkey and after a brief stint in Cairo, uh, Mr. Gulbenkian established himself in London. He is thought to have started his collection at the age of 14 when he bought some ancient Greek coins at the bazaar or the market in Istanbul. I think it should be mentioned that Mr. Gulbenkian came from a family of oil importers, so clearly he was a privileged 14-year-old, but he used that wealth to further his knowledge and his love for the arts. And clearly since the age of 14 until his death in 1955, he ceaselessly collected artworks. At one point he was even in negotiations with the Soviet government for acquisitions of some of their art pieces. He was a tireless art collector and this museum hosts some of his best pieces. The collection was highly diverse, which makes it one of the most unique in the world. He didn't just collect pieces from Turkey or where he was from. He collected pieces from China. He collected pieces from Egypt. He collected European pieces. His love for art shows in this collection. entire art collection is massive so what helps is that it is displayed in a geographic and chronological way so for example all of the pieces from the Ming Dynasty are in the same area all of the pieces from Turkey are in the same area all of the pieces from Europe are in the same area the museum's director is Antonio Felipe Pimentel and it's a gorgeous, gorgeous space on the inside and outside. And what I personally like about it is that each space that you go into is a dedicated space for that period of art. And it, it fits, the decor fits with the artwork. So for example, you see here, we have the vases from the dynasties in China. Um, and how the vases are displayed, it matches how the room is set up. A little later on, we're going to go into the European art section and you will see the difference in the decor. And 
here is the European art section of the museum and you can see for yourself how the decor has now changed from stone and hard surfaces to wood warmly colored wooden surfaces everywhere. It is believed that most of these pieces were once housed at his house in Paris and during his lifetime it is thought that he collected over 6,400 artworks and he has personally commissioned over 140 of them. The day when we were there, there was a visiting uh, painting. So it was the self-portrait of Rembrandt, which was, and I quote, to offer a notion of self-representation and to offer a new reading of the two of Rembrandt's paintings already belonging to the Gulbeckian collection. Okay, that's it for today and in conclusion I must say that seeing all of these art pieces also makes me want to see the space at which they were once housed in Paris I'm not sure how many of my viewers know but most Parisian houses most Parisian apartments are extremely small so seeing all these gigantic pieces and these gigantic um, furniture which was once housed in the, in the Parisian house of Mr. Gulbenkian. Um, it makes me actually want to see the space now. All right, that's it for today. I'll leave you with one of my favorite pieces from the collection. It's called Les Bretons au Pardon, which is, means the Breton woman at pardon. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much for supporting me. And I'll leave you with some scenes from Lisbon.